Thank you. The American people are rightly concerned about just how fundamentally unfair and unjust the Biden administration's trillion dollar student loan bailout and policies are for hardworking American families. Those hardworking American families who may have chosen not to go to college or perhaps could not afford it or worked responsibly to pay off their loans. But yet they're going to foot the bill for this trillion dollar bailout and they'll also feel the effects of more and more painful Biden inflation. Mr. Goldwine, in your testimony you mentioned the Biden plan would increase inflation by 15 to 27 points while lining the pockets of the wealthy and those with advanced degrees. For the folks on the panel, just so you know, in my district in upstate New York in the North Country, approximately three quarters of constituents that I represent do not hold a bachelor's degree or higher. That includes my immediate family members who are very successful, community leaders who are very successful, local elected officials, CEOs of successful manufacturers and small businesses. What sorts of negative impacts will nearly those three quarters of my constituents see as a result of Joe Biden's painful policy proposal? That question is for you, Mr. Goldwine, and for you, Mr. Looney. Uh, well, anybody that's not benefiting directly from the debt forgiveness is going to be hurt indirectly by the higher inflation it causes. As you mentioned, we estimate about a quarter point increase in inflation. That means higher prices at the grocery store, higher rents, higher prices at the gas price, you name it. But the real risk is if that higher inflation pushes us into a recession. As the Federal Reserve responds by raising rates, we saw just these last couple of weeks what that can do to destabilize the banking sector, the housing sector. And um, if there's a big spike in unemployment, it's those without college degrees that are going to be hurt the most. Mr. Looney. Uh, thank you. Well, I, you know, one, one of the most important divisions in our country is between those who have a college degree and those that, that don't in terms of how much they earn and the quality of jobs they have, um, you know, whether they're married or divorced, um, you know, whether they die of deaths of despair. Um, and so you know, college graduates tend to be better off uh, on average. And so you know, policies that, that transfer, transfer income uh, to, to those advantaged groups uh, and, and pay for it effectively among those that don't, uh, you know, increase inequality rather than uh, reduce it. Dr. Salerno, shifting gears here, the department has traditionally relied on debt to earnings measure for assessing whether programs led to gainful employment for their graduate, but that doesn't consider the $30 billion in Pell Grants we disperse every year that may be paying for programs that provide a negative return on investment. The Promoting Employment and Lifelong Learning Act, or the Pell Act, that I introduced along with the chair of this committee, Dr. Fox, and other members of this committee, proposed strong accountability guardrails, including measuring whether the program's price is aligned with the earnings boost that graduates receive three years after obtaining their credential. Is this metric something that could be applied to all programs at all institutions receiving federal student aid dollars if Congress were to rewrite gainful employment in statute? Congresswoman, thank you for the question. I think the answer is yes, it would. Uh, a three-year metric uh, has value in the sense that uh, it gives enough runway for students to get into their career earnings. Uh, but it also limits the time of exposure to a point where we can no longer attribute their gains to something other than college, so I think it's valuable. Uh, I think it's also easy to understand. I think we understand the concept of ROI. We understand it in different capacities of our lives. Uh, the fact that it could be used here not for just one class of institutions, but for all institutions, again, improves transparency and uh, reduces uncertainty and improves comparability. Thank you. I yield back. 